Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Welcome back to another planting video. Today we are doing some repotting. I have not sat down and done a dedicated repotting video in such a long time. I actually haven't even repotted plants off camera in such a long time either, so I'm very excited. Some of these I have been meaning to pot up for quite a while now. We have some propagations that we're going to be potting up and we also have a couple of plants that are already potted but we're going to be sizing them up. Also planning on adding a moss pole to one of them, so very excited. I also made up a brand new batch of my potting mix a few days ago, so that's always such a great feeling. Very excited to use that. And I added the Osmo Coat and Myco into my potting mix, so nobody has to be yelling at me through the screen when I forget it every single time anymore. I have nine plants in total to pot up in this video, so grab yourself a cozy beverage. We're just gonna relax. It is the evening time for me. It's snowing outside, which is crazy. But yeah, just gonna be chill vibes, so I hope you are ready for that. Today's video is kindly sponsored by Babbel, one of the top language learning apps in the world. I feel like Babbel could really come in handy for a lot of people right now because we're approaching the time of year where people have nice, warm, sunny vacations planned. I, sadly, do not. If I did though, I can imagine the question, Danda esta la tienda de plantas? Coming in useful. Or maybe something a little bit more useful like Donde Este El Baño. Personally, I love using Babbel to be able to go at my own pace in learning a second language. Mostly right now, I'm doing it as a brain exercise and just something to challenge myself, but hopefully one day I'll be able to use it in the real world as well. Babbel's great because they teach real world conversation skills through short 10 minute interactive lessons, so it's so easy to just slot that into your daily schedule. And the lessons are really fun too. There's a variety of different formats. There's podcasts, videos, games, and all the lessons are designed by real language teachers. They use award-winning technology proven to get you speaking in three weeks, which is amazing. I would love to hear if any of y'all are wanting to learn a new language and which one it is, so make sure you leave me a comment. And if you would like to get started with Babbel, you can get 60% off of your subscription by clicking the link down below in the description box. Thank you so much again to Babbel for sponsoring this video. Now let's hop into our repotting. Okay, I don't even know where I want to start. Maybe I'll show you all the plants that we're going to be working with today. So the first one, um, I'm so excited about this one. This is my Philodendron Narrow or Jungle Boogie. So it's just like the green, um, like wavy leaf dude here. I love this Philodendron so much. He's working on a new leaf right now and this plant I don't even know if it needs to be repotted necessarily I haven't really been noticing any signs that it's due but we will find out um, because I'm wanting to give it a moss pole so I have a pot that is one size up um, like I said I don't know if it necessarily needs to be upsized but we're gonna need to accommodate a moss pole so I've got a thickly pole right here all ready to go um, I guess we'll start. Actually, no, I'm gonna go through the rest of them. I'm getting ahead of myself already. Okay, I'm just very excited to get that on a moss pole. I've been seeing, um, I had never really thought to put this on a moss pole before because the internodes are like quite tight on this plant. It's not really, when I think of climbing philodendron, this isn't really what comes to mind, but I have recently seen some people growing these on moss poles and I'm like, okay, that's really cool. So I wanna give it a go too. Um, okay, so then the other ones that we're gonna be potting up are some of my propagations. So we have my Mandula pothos. We're potting up a lot of the plants that I hauled in my Wishes Plant trade haul that I posted in September. Um, so we have my Mandula pothos that I'm finally gonna be potting up. And then we have two varieties of Jewel Orchid, um, which are doing surprisingly well. I don't know why I thought that these were just gonna like perish on me before they were even potted, but they look great. So really excited to get those potted up. And then next we are gonna be potting up all of my silvery Hoyas that have been rooting. So we have my Crassiopetiolata Splash, my Wilbur Graves. I'll show you better once we're actually repotting them. And then my Polynera Broguette or Brogé, still have no idea, somebody please inform. Um, yes, so those guys, and then I'm finally, finally, finally 
going to be repotting my Hoya Sunrise, which this is probably the plant that's in most desperate need of a repot in my collection. I mean, it's a Hoya, so it's okay being root bound, but the, ma the main problem is that it's so bad that it dries out super quickly. Um, this whole thing is basically roots. Like I can just see them sticking up out of the pot. Um, so that'll be really great to have finally potted into a larger. Did I even grab a pot for that one? Gosh, I don't even know. I might have to grab another pot. Um, most of them are going to be going into these orchid pots that I've grabbed and then the philodendron into here. And then I'm probably going to put this into terracotta or, or do I want to put it... I'm thinking about hanging it from my bed. That's kind of my go-to for trailing plants lately. I'm gonna think on that, I might do that. Um, but I guess the one that we're gonna start with is gonna be the philodendron narrow. Um, so I'm going to pull them out of here and see what we're working with. Oh, maybe it is a bit more rooted than I think. Hmm. This is definitely one of the most easygoing philodendron in my collection. Um, it doesn't really ever complain, even though I let it get way too dry. And I know that I do that uh, for sure. So, and it's never yellowed or anything. It's kind of similar to the Billy Etier in that way. That's another philodendron that literally never complains no matter what I do to it. Um, Okay, so we do actually have some decent roots. I think it will appreciate an up pot. Um, yeah, it's quite rooty. It's not like too bad, but it's definitely got some roots happening, which is really nice to see. So that is what that guy is looking like. So let's, I guess I should have made the moss pole first, shouldn't I? Why do I always do this? You'd think I would have this dialed by now. I have like 20 moss poles in my house. Um, okay, let me, um, actually, you know what I can do? I can just move this off to the side for now and then have my moss pole nice and flat. I have to move this down. There we go. Okay, so I need my sphagnum moss now. Oh, it's a little dry. I had to soak the sphagnum moss a little bit more, so I'm just having a little bowl of cereal while we wait for that. This is so good. This is crispy rice, which is the organic version of Rice Krispies, blueberries, a little bit of coconut sugar, and some oat milk. Oh my goodness. Divine, you guys. Okay, I'm back. We're gonna commence making this moss pole. So, got my moss. Honestly, a little too wet now, but it's okay. Just give her a squeeze. if I need to add any more or not. Oh shoot, I forgot to bend it. Jeez, I always do that. You want to bend at the, at the creases before you start this, but I'm gonna try to do mine right now because I always forget for some reason. Okay, that one is good. Now this side. Okay. That's... Okay, that's a little better. So now I'm gonna try to close it up.
little bit into the top. There we go. It looks awesome. I've been using these thickly poles for several months now and I've been really happy with them. They look so good, so sleek. I especially like the clear version. Um, I love that you can see the roots and they maintain the moisture for a lot longer. So yeah, I have really been enjoying these. I actually have a few of my plants that are at the top of their thickly poles. So I'm trying to decide whether I'm gonna be chopping them or extending the poles or what. But yeah, they seem to really like them. They climb them quickly. Okay, now that I've got my sphagnum mess here, I am just gonna set my potting mat right on top of that. Ugh, this blanket's annoying, but I'm freezing. Like I said, this is the terracotta pot that I'm going to be using. I'm just going to throw in some of this extra potting mix here that was in the old pot. Might as well use it up. And then I'm going to figure out how I want to situate this. I'm just going to fill the pole like this. now carefully put it in there we go okay that looks good now I think I actually am going to loosen up the root ball just a little bit on here so I thought I would give you all a little update on how I've been doing um, and I'm very happy to say that it's a positive update. The last time I really talked about my, my mental health on this channel was in, I think August, at the very end of August. I think it was my August favorites video when I, okay, of course, the moment I start actually talking about something, my battery dies. Um, I just finished kind of removing what I wanted to remove off of the roots here and there is quite a bit of roots like i am happy that we're going to be upsizing this because i think that it pretty much was time for this plant uh, but the roots look really good so i'm really happy with that but i'm just going to i'm going to figure out which way i want him to be growing i think i'm gonna do this way against the pole like that i'm gonna put a little bit more i'm gonna add some of this back in actually Okay, now, which way did I want it? This way. Put this guy in like so. I want to have it like against the pole-ish. I think I'm going to peel off these like sheaths because they're kind of in the way of the aerial roots. I want the aerial roots to be able to grow into the pole. Oh! Oh, that's an aerial root. I thought it was another growth point for a second. Okay. So, I want him to be like so. Now I'm just going to add some more potting mix. So as I was saying, the last time I've really given any, the last time I've really spoken about my mental health, at least on this channel, was in my, um, yeah, that August favorites video when I opened up about my panic attacks and just having, how I was having a really rough summer anxiety wise. 
And I'm very, very grateful to say that I have been doing a lot better. I have not had a panic attack in over two months now. Um, so I am just so, so thankful for that. And I'm so thankful for the amount of support that I've gotten. Like to this day, I'm still getting messages and comments from you guys just being so nice, um, sharing your own experiences and just just being so amazing and understanding. So thank you so much to all of you because yeah, you guys have really been a big support for me and I was so happy that I opened up and talked about that because I just instantly felt so much better after sharing that and being honest with where I was at. But just the outpouring of love that resulted from that was just, yeah, it was so worth um, being a little bit vulnerable. But anyways, yeah, I have been doing, let me make this go up a little bit. I've been doing so much better. Um, I've been sticking to healthy routines that I've been trying to stick to for so long, but just wasn't able to for one reason or another. So in a way, I'm kind of grateful that I went through that because it really forced me to do better at taking care of myself. So for example, I've been really committed to my running. I've been running consistently for like 10 weeks now, which I've never done before. And I feel like it's made such a huge impact in my mental health and probably my physical health as well. And I'm just really proud of that because it's something that I've always wanted to, you know, be committed to, but I was just never able to. So, so going through that really made me to kind of analyze my life and figure out where I needed to make improvements. So that was exercise. Um, I stopped drinking coffee, which if you have been on my channel in the past, then you might know I was an avid coffee addict. Let's be real here. Um, yeah, I could not go without my daily, like, four cups of coffee, and I had tried to quit coffee before, like, probably, I don't know, like, seven or eight different times, and never could, and, um, yeah, I went for over two months without, I had, like, the odd coffee, like, one or two as a treat, but, like, I did not even have coffee in my house, like, I was not, didn't have my coffee maker out, like, it was not part of my daily routine at all. I was just drinking tea um, and I feel like I really needed that in that kind of like healing period you know like I did not need more cortisol coursing through my body um, so I feel like that really helped me and I was also just proud of myself for being able to do that because I tried so hard and the longest I'd gone was 25 days which was last December and I caved on Christmas Day um, but this time I'm not approaching it in that way like before I was very like you know, all or nothing, like very strict. And then I just felt really bad when I did end up drinking coffee again. This time I'm just being like really relaxed about it. And I'm like, if I want to drink coffee, then I will drink coffee, but I don't feel chained to it. Like I need to drink it every single day. And I'm just kind of listening to my body um, rather than just like immediately doing that every single day without even thinking about whether I want to or need to have a cup of coffee that day, you know? So yeah, I'm just being more mindful about it. I think those are the two biggest changes that I've made. Um, I've also just become more active overall, like just really prioritizing moving my body and exercising, which has been amazing. Taking Olive for more walks. I'm eating first thing in the mornings now, which apparently can be a contributor to anxiety if you don't eat for like hours on end and then your blood sugar drops and the symptoms are kind of the same. So I, I was someone who I would wake up and just drink coffee and then not have anything else for like four or five hours, um, which is obviously not a good combination. So now I eat first thing in the morning, I have my tea and I eat first thing in the morning. Just like little changes like that, I feel like have really helped me out. I still wanna clean up my diet more, but that is a whole other conversation. Um, what else have I done? I'm trying to be consistent with meditation, but I'm definitely not. I, I cannot even claim to be like a frequent meditator. I was doing really well, especially when I was like right in that panic and anxiety episode, like those those weeks where it was really acute 
and really severe. I was meditating every single day and then I kept up with it a little bit after, but I've definitely fallen off. So that's a priority for me to get back on top of my meditation because it really does make such a big difference. And I feel like it's like a reset time. Okay, we need to do some plants. I'm ranting now. <laughs> I feel like it's just a, like a cleansing reset moment for our brains in a world that is so intense and distracting and fighting for our attention and just like thinking of even just like social media and TikTok and just being bombarded with information like at every hour every minute of the day honestly it's really just not good for our brains so meditation can at least give us some time to kind of just be so I feel like it's really important whether I'm struggling with anxiety or not you know just for like my general well-being Okay, why don't we do these guys next? This one, um, okay, I'm gonna pull them all out. Ooh, look at them roots. Look at them roots. Very, very nice. Um, this orchid right here, the darker one. Let me get it disconnected here. What's going on? The darker one looks like it's doing something and I don't know if it's a new leaf or if it's a bloom. It doesn't look like a leaf, but maybe it could be. I don't really know too much about these, but look at that new thing coming in. Doesn't that look like, I don't know. I'm not sure what it is, but I guess I'll find out. Um, so there's this one that's gonna be its own separate thing and then, or should I do them together? I think I might do them together, actually. These are such weird little dudes. I've never had jewel orchids before. I think I'm gonna do them together. Yeah, that'll be cute. Okay. Um, yeah, these are my first jewel orchids. That's why I said I was surprised that they're still alive because I have no experience with them. It looks like it's putting out a growth point like from the bottom. Oh, two of the cuttings are. Oh my gosh. They're putting out growth from like where the roots are. So that's gonna get buried in the pot. Whoops. Okay, so I'm going to pot them in this one, I think. Yeah, let's do that. Anyways, I just wanted to give y'all a little update. Um, just because I had shared that and yeah, I just wanted to let y'all know that I'm doing really well. So yeah. That's still honestly like the craziest and scariest thing that I think I've ever been through that whole panic attack time. Like honestly, that was so bad. I really, really empathize with anybody else who is going through that or has gone through that. Okay, just gonna fill her up. Oh, where's my scoop? Here. <laughs> I always thought that you had to keep these in like a terrarium or cabinet situation but I've just had these sitting on top of my Melsbo in front of the window and they've been fine so if you have jewel orchids let me know what conditions you grow them in actually just let me know any information you have about them because um I'm a noob here when it comes to them but I am excited to watch these guys grow and yeah, I'm just pleasantly surprised that they are doing okay. Oh, they're so cute potted in there together. I love it. Okay. There we go. That's what those guys look like. I hope it's not too noisy that I have my heater running. It's so loud and I usually turn it off when I'm filming, but it's just freezing in here right now. And last winter, y'all commented that it wasn't that loud. So I'm taking your word for it and hopefully it'll be fine. 
I feel like I notice it more than anything. Like when I'm editing, I'm like, ugh, like why is the heater on? Okay, next we're gonna do the Manjula, which has roots that look really good. Except for this one, why does it look a little bit? Oh no, it's fine. Oh, maybe it's not fine. This one root just looks a little, mm, no, it's not bad, I don't think. I'm gonna leave it. For the most part though, they look really good. And the leaves look gorgeous. I got so many comments um, from y'all saying that you love this plant so much and you grow it and just sharing your experiences. So thank you for that. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to be growing it. I can't believe I haven't had one until now. I'm going to use this pot for this guy, just a larger orchid pot. This is probably like only like a four four and a half inch maybe and I'm gonna stick them in fill it up it's so nice having the osmo coat and myco mixed in here I don't even have to think about it I'm finally back on track with my watering schedule I had fallen so behind I was like just really busy during October. I was out of town and doing things. I was camping, um, which is kind of crazy. It rained, it poured, like downpoured the whole time. I was camping, I was over in Vancouver. I went to like a Fright Night thing at an amusement park and saw La Dispute, my favorite band, which was incredible. I have a vlog of that trip on my vlog channel if you haven't seen it. Um, it was so much fun, but yeah i was just really busy and then i got sick right at the end of october right on halloween weekend so i was supposed to do like a haunted um a haunted what is it called like corn maze pumpkin patch spooky little thing and had to cancel that and i was also supposed to do a ghost walk like a halloween version of the ghost walk here in victoria which i've done like several times in the past but i love it and it's such like a fun thing to do at halloween time even just walking around the city at night is just really i don't know it's just like good vibes um so i was so bummed that we had to cancel that as well but we were able to reschedule it and we're doing it um this weekend so um i'm excited for that we're doing it on saturday so that should be fun but yeah, I was sick, so I was so busy and then sick. So pretty much all October, I feel like I was just like scrambling to catch up with my watering routine and everything. But now everybody's watered and I'm just like back on track with doing one section a night or every couple nights. So I'm feeling really good about that. Oh, it's a little bit. Sometimes you get like these weird air pockets and I just kind of, I don't want like huge gaps in here. It's probably not the hugest deal because this is probably what the inside of our terracotta pots look like, but we just can't see because they're not clear. But when I can see it, it bothers me, so I need to kind of push everything down. Anyways, okay, this one is now good to go as well. I really like this potting mix that I did this time. It's just the same stuff that I normally use, but... I always just kind of eyeball the proportions, so sometimes it turns out better than other times. Anyways, this is what it looks like. Look at how cute. <laughs> I like it. Okay. Wow, we've got one, two, three, I guess technically four done. Okay, let's move on to the Hoya section over here. I'm so excited to be potting up these silver Hoya. Um, I have just been anticipating doing this, so let's start. Oh my goodness, he's even got a new vine shooting out. So cute. Okay, so this is my Crassio Petiolata Splash, which is so incredible. Like, I really, really like this one. This is one that wasn't even on my radar. Um, and then I got it in that trade, and now I'm literally obsessed, so... Very excited to grow this little guy. Now I just have some of these small little pots for these, so I'm just gonna use this. Got one for this guy. Actually, who has the whoops? Who has the most roots? 
this guy. <laughs> this guy has the most roots, so maybe should I do the biggest one for him, probably? Okay, let's move him over to this one. Just gonna add a little bit. Put him in, and then fill her up. Now these guys can take off and grow for me. I'm so excited. Now that they're all rooted up, it's great. Okay. I hope that you guys have been doing well. Let me know in the comments what's been up and how you're doing and feeling. I know that this time of year can be tough for multiple different reasons um, because of weather and the holidays. Sometimes that's hard for some people. I hope that you're doing okay though. Maybe some of you are really excited for the holidays. I'm not a huge Christmas person, but every year I try a little bit harder <laughs> to get in the spirit. Um, I always like go all out for spooky season, which by the way, I am still behind on one episode of the Spooky Repot, the last one. Oh my goodness, it's taking me forever. But that was another thing that was happening when I got sick. It threw me behind for that as well. So I'm still doing another one. Um, it's just gonna, it's just gonna go up when it goes up. So I don't have a timeline at this point. It's kind of like not as enticing to do when it's <laughs> October is past, but I do really want to do another installment because I only did two and I plan to do three. So that will be coming. Anyways, I'm not really a huge um, like Christmas or holiday person, but I do try to be more in the spirit. This is so cute. Oh my goodness, I'm literally obsessed with this Hoya. Like, are you kidding me? I don't think I'll really be decorating. I was thinking about how a couple of years ago, I don't know if anyone remembers, but when I lived in like my old, old place, the noisy place with my noisy upstairs neighbors, um, I decorated my, I didn't decorate, I put lights around. I had a big Monstera Adinsonii. Oh, the heater turned off. That's good. I had a big Monstera Adinsonii on a moss pole and I put Christmas lights around it and it looked so cute. So I wish I had a plant that I could decorate this year, but I don't really know. I mean, I could decorate my Painted Lady actually. She's pretty substantial. Let me know if you have any suggestions for like planty decorations or like, I don't know. I went to Michael's the other day and I was looking for, you know how I had my ghost garland up here? Well, I left the command hooks on the wall because every time I take them off, I seem to pull the paint off with them, which is really annoying. So I was like, I'm just gonna leave them on this time and maybe I can use it for like a little Christmas garland like something festive i don't know i thought that michaels would maybe have something cute but they really didn't like everything was just kind of not the vibe so i didn't end up getting one but i'm trying to get in the spirit over here okay next one we're gonna do is gonna be the polyneura so cute the top of that stem did turn yellow which i was a little concerned about but i think that it's fine um, the rest of it is still really healthy looking, so yeah, okay, I'm gonna put this one in here. And there we go. I've still been really into reading. Um, I'm so thankful for reading. It's honestly just the best. Uh, I, which I talk about reading and like make some book videos on my vlog channel too, which is really fun. Most people don't really care, but I like talking about it and some people like watching them. So I'm going to continue to do them. But, um, I just finished the X hex, which is a fun, a fun little witchy romance novel. Um, and I did enjoy that quite a bit. And now I'm reading, uh, All Good People Here by Ashley Flowers, who is the host of the Crime Junkie podcast, which I never listened to before, but um, my mom does. That's what got me hearing about this book, and it had really good reviews. It's like a, a thriller, murder mystery type of thing, and it's so good so far. I love it. I love her writing style, and yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it. So 
Um, yeah, I'm excited to get more into it. I'm probably only like 10% into it, maybe a little bit more, but yeah, I'm loving it so far, so it's great. Oh, did I even show this? The Polynera, there it is. My camera's had the overheat warning for like 10 minutes now. I'm just waiting for it to shut off on me, but it hasn't yet, so we're gonna continue. We're gonna do the... Oof, I just splashed myself in the face somehow. The Hoya, <laughs> I just like zoned out for some reason. Literally nothing was going through my brain. I wasn't even like trying to figure out what this was called or anything. I was just doing that thing that I do. This is the Hoya Wilbur Graves, um, I think Russia version, um, which I can't even believe what I have still. Like it blows my mind. Um, you know, when you just get a plant that you never thought you would be able to get that is how I feel with this one. Okay, so let's fill her up. Oh, I can't wait to give you guys an update on my variegated Thanksgiving cactus as well. And I also also have another plant friend um, locally to me, like very locally, like within minutes of where I am, who wants to do a trade with me. And she has a variegated Thanksgiving cactus, which I never knew but it's gorgeous and she's willing to trade me a cutting of it so then I can make mine more full. And I, of course, really wanna do that because I'm literally obsessed with that plant. <laughs> I will gather as many cuttings from different specimens as I can. So yeah, but mine is doing really well. I'm like so in love with it. Okay. Okay, there we are. Oh my goodness, wait, I don't want him to be buried too deep. Are these other ones buried too deep? No, they're good. Okay, get paranoid sometimes. No, I think he's okay. And I am just gonna be keeping these in the Millsbow wide. Um, just They're just small so they can fit in there and it gives them a really good head start, especially because it's going to start getting more dry in my place. My hands are already getting so dry and it's not even like, right now, right now it's 54% humidity, which is not bad, honestly, considering I've been having the heat blasting. Okay, that is what this guy is looking like. Like, look at that. Are you kidding me? That is so, so nice. Oh, I love these Hoyas so much. Oh my goodness, the three of them just look so precious together. Oh my goodness, like, are you kidding me? Look at them all. <laughs> I'm so spoiled with these Hoya. Okay, we're gonna move on to the last one, but I think, actually, it might not need that much of a bigger, let's just open this up. Let's. Pull this out first. Oh, yeah. It's literally just one chunk of roots. Like, oh, look at that. Oh my goodness, it's so rooted. Okay, let me see how big of a difference this is. No, it's gonna need, that's pretty much the same size. Okay. Um, I'm being lazy. I'm trying to get out of getting up, but I'm gonna have to get up, so BRB. My squeaky couch. All right, I'm gonna go for just a black plastic pot and then I can attach a hanger to it if I want and hang it off of my bed like I was thinking. So that's simple enough. Let's fill her up. This is gonna be so much better. This thing was just drying out so quickly. It bloomed, I think I got two blooms this summer, which is honestly kind of surprising considering like how much it was drying out. Usually if I let my Hoyas dry out when they're trying to bloom, the blooms will just dry up as well, just shrivel up on me. So 
Um, yeah, but I actually got two juicy blooms out of this gal, so that's really cool. I should honestly propagate this because it's all coming from this like one little, or like, yeah, one stem. Um, so maybe I'll take some cuttings later on. I'm gonna let it adjust to its new home first. Okay, perfect, should be happy with that. The only problem with repotting is that whenever I repot my plants, everything's getting larger, everything is sizing up, whether it's propagations going into pots or pots getting upsized to larger pots. It's always taking up more space, so I kind of have to like navigate where everything is gonna go now, which is, can be a little bit of a struggle, but the plants have to be repotted, you know? So what do you do? Okay, so this is what she's looking like. I can't believe I grew this from just like a tiny little um, plant, but she's looking amazing. So there we go, the finished result. I think I'm gonna pop these all in the bathtub and water them with my shower. That's gonna be the easiest way. So let's do that before we wrap up this video. All right, I'm just gonna let those plants hang out in the shower for a little while before I put them back in their spots. But I guess this brings me to the end of the video. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Leave me a comment down below. I would love to hear from you. I appreciate you guys so, so much. I don't know if I've said it recently, but I really do. Thank you so much for being here and watching my videos and supporting me. It really means so much. Also a huge thank you to Babbel for sponsoring this video. If you are interested in learning a new language, make sure to check out their app with the link down below in the description box. You can get 60% off of your subscription. Pretty awesome. And I think that that is it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.